Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. This is day four of Startup Boston Week. We're really excited that you could join us today. This is the Startup Curious Track, and this session is about networking for people who have full-time jobs. If this was not the session that you planned on attending, go back up to the agenda up in the menu bar, and you can find the session that you should have been in. But hopefully this is the right session for you, and we're excited to have you here. Startup Boston is now in its fifth year, and we have been focused in all that time on building community among all of us in Boston, um, in the startups, but also to education, right? So Stephanie, our lead organizer, realized like a lot of us do, once you're in a startup, there aren't people to turn to, right? It's just us a lot of times. You're either the founder as a solo person or you're the only person who has your job and so the best way to help yourself is to build a network of people, which is what we've been doing here. And as part of that, our panelists um, are here to help us talk about networking. Um, logistically, I just wanted to let you know that there is a Q&A, so please ask questions as we go along. There's no reason that you have to wait. Also, I want you to um, hopefully win a little contest that we're running at Startup Boston Week. Pay attention to the things that the panelists say if you quote what they're saying on social media and hashtag it SBW2021, we are running a raffle for five $100 gift cards to uh, black owned businesses in Boston. So we're really excited about that. And who doesn't like to win things on a Thursday morning? So um, let's get started. I'm Christine Ferrucci Ross. I am one of the organizers for Startup Boston. I also uh, work in the cybersecurity space in marketing and I'm gonna be moderating. And I'd like to introduce the panelists for them to do that themselves. So Jen, maybe you can go first. Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Good morning, everyone. Hi, I'm Jen. I'm the founder of Work Wonders Careers, where we help people land new jobs and thrive at work. And a big component of that is helping people build and leverage the professional relationships in their life. So I'm really excited to be here this morning with all of you. So thanks for having me. Thanks, Jen. Bailey? Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Bailey Brown. I am a tech recruiter in the Boston area, um, working at a local former startup. I've, I've been in the industry, it's say four years in Boston, but maybe, you know, 10 years total. I've been in and around recruiting spaces. Um, and, and this is my, my sort of, you know, conference speaking debut. So I'm so excited to meet all of you. Thanks, Bailey. Mansi? Hey everyone, excited to be here. Thank you, Christine, first of all, for having us on this panel. Um, my name is Mansi Vora. I'm the VP of Strategy and Operations at Skynet Labs, which is a cryptocurrency um, blockchain startup out of Boston. What we do is essentially um, we've created a platform for decentralized data storage where you are in total control of all of the data that you store. But um, as part of my job, a lot of it is about networking, finding the right partners and clients. Mm -hmm. And I do this day in and out. So happy to um, share some of my learnings today here on this panel. Thanks, Monsi and Barry. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm a uh, CTO and a consultant uh, now. And I spent uh, about 40 years in high tech. I built my own software company and CRM and uh, sold that. And then I worked um, as a corporate executive for Schneider Electric for many years and ran a division of Schneider Electric focused on energy efficiency in, in large buildings. And um, now, yeah, now I'm just consulting. And uh, thank you, Christine, for organizing this. And I'm looking forward to engaging with all of you out there attending. Great. And thank you all so much. And I know that in our prep calls, we were talking about how important networking had been to all of us at different points in our careers. But I think also we all have in our heads a different definition of what we think networking is. So maybe we could kick off with each of you could tell the audience, like, what is networking to you? Do you have like a strategy for networking? Bailey, do you want to kick us off with that? Sure. Um, so for, for me, networking is, you know, it's all about meeting, you know, like-minded people. And sometimes it's, it's really about meeting people who are very different from you and getting those diverse perspectives. Um, and so, and I think as a recruiter for me, it's, it's, it's definitely column A and column B. I have equal parts, both. Um, but as far as the strategy, 
I think I very intentionally don't have one. Um, I feel like a strategy when when recruiting gets too formula, not recruiting, excuse me, when networking gets too formulaic, too strategic, you sort of, you know, you're knocking on the same doors. Um, and so I sort of purposefully don't have a strategy. So that way, you know, because I can always find those, you know, recruiters, those like minded people. But in, in you know, looking for different um, candidates or even just different people to just chat with around idea sharing, I have to keep myself open to other areas that I might not have originally thought of. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think. Um, oh, Monsi, please. No, I think I agree with Bailey in terms of, you know, not having a strict strategy. But uh, from my perspective, I would say there are two objectives for me when I'm thinking about networking. One, of course, you know, from a company and business standpoint is finding the right partners, um, you know, identifying clients, people that you would want to work with in the future. But the second component, is, I think, which is, you know, I value it a lot more is just having some amazing conversations and getting to learn from other experts in the field. Um, you know, there, there are just so many resources out there, but the best way for me to learn is start talking to people who are working in the, in the space, who are solving some hard problems and just learning through osmosis. So th those are the two things that I look for when I'm thinking about networking. And, uh, you know, that kind of translates into the strategy is what, what am I looking for? Um, mm -hmm. Where would I find those right people? Um, some of the things that have worked for me in the past just tactically has been like identifying meetup groups, which have a common theme, um, you know, especially in the blockchain and crypto industry, which is fairly new. There's, there's a lot going on. Um, so if you're interested in, for example, decentralized finance, find a group that's talking about that subject. Um, go go there, see how see how it goes. Um, and I think it's a trial and error process where you would go to maybe 10 different uh, events and you would only like one or two. And it's you know critical in the earlier stage to identify those and then just go heads down on those two uh, groups that you know really provided a lot of value to you. Yeah. I love, yeah, sorry, were you gonna go, Barry? Go no, go ahead, Jen. I was just gonna echo a little bit um, of what I'm hearing so far. I don't wanna put words in your mouth, Bailey, but like what I'm hearing is like the lack of strategy kind of allows for like a little bit more of like an organic approach to meeting people. Um, and what that reminded me of is like how many people sort of resist <laughs> networking because they don't like the way it sounds or that it feels too transactional or they're thinking there has to be some sort of like one-on-one -on -one exchange. So it helps me, I guess if I have a strategy at all, it's to think about it as like, how am I tending to the relationships as part of my own professional growth, right? Like how do I think of career planning in a way that includes, you know, nurturing and pouring into other people and also like receiving support and help and introductions. Um, and that's not always an even exchange. So part of my strategy, I actually have some reminders in my uh, calendar each month to like, you know, who have you connected with? Who have you supported? Um, really kind of making introductions for other people and remembering that even when I'm looking to meet people for my own purposes, there's still opportunities for me to support others in the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's, I, I agree with all of that. And, and, I, and I think maybe for me, it's less of a strategy and more of a philosophy um, of networking, which is that you don't want it to be transactional. Uh, if you if you're going after transactional, it's the wrong it's the wrong way to think about it. it it's um, uh, and what I guess what I've seen over the years is it's maybe about critical mass. So you need a fairly large network because because it is not transactional. Uh, there's a little bit of happenstance that occurs. Uh, you know, luck. You know, so so. I mean, if you're if you're on LinkedIn, for example, aiming for trying to have 500 to 1,000 good connections is not unusual. I think most of us have that, and uh, or more, um, and be ready to attend to them when they need help, and uh, and be and don't be shy about reaching out when you need help. Uh, and then I think the last uh, the last thing I would say on on this part is. Uh, uh, you know, tr make sure you're constantly planting seeds. I've been in the I've been in the industry for 40 years. I make a point of trying to add another person or two every single week to my network, new new person, and I've been doing that for 40 years. So it's it's uh, it's you know you just kind of build it into your rhythm. Yeah, right. 
Uh, and I did want to um, get back to that point a little bit because I think we've all seen research that says a lot of times when you're job hunting or you know when you need things, it's the loose connections, right? So peep not necessarily the people that you know the best or have known the longest, but somebody that you met five years ago, but you've sort of stayed in touch with. Um, and pandemic rules, we're all being open with each other. My dog is incredibly noisy and I can't mute because I'm moderating. So I'm, <laughs> we're, we're just gonna like let him go. If you wanna see him, he's sort of like hanging out by the window now. Um, so apologies for that. Uh, but I did wanna, <laughs> this is, right, it's pandemic rules. We're all like, we're, we're human, right? we have lives, we're all where we are. Um, but Barry, if you could dig into that a little bit, because I know that when we talked before this call, right, you were talking about how like your network has helped you over the years. Um, and can you talk a little bit about like how you think about your network given say a particular goal, right? Like Monsi too, you were talking about like sometimes you're looking for a partner, sometimes you're looking for customers, sometimes you're looking for somebody who's just a smart person that you wanna know. Like, does that involve doing different activities Barry, if you can kick uh, that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, I have a project running right now that's heavily dependent on my network. And it's been the, actually the second and third degree connections on LinkedIn. If you're familiar with LinkedIn, like you have your primary connections and then they know people. So it's really been the, the, the fact that I have a, a very strong like core network. And then that network has put me in touch with some some super important people in this project I'm working on, which is, you know, in the, in the, in the uh, network communication space, it's very technical and arcane. Uh, and uh, there's very few experts on this topic. So I've been able to find many of those experts there. Um, and so that, but that they, they weren't necessarily in my immediate pool. They, they helped me connect and which was, very so well. Do you just like put out a request? Do you just like reach mm -hmm. out to people and say, do you know someone? Yeah, I do. <laughs> and I, and I, I, I don't, I don't mean to advertise for LinkedIn. I have no, <laughs> no affiliation there, but it's a good tool. And I, what I find is I sparingly use the network, the LinkedIn messaging when I need something hot and it's moving fast or it's a, you know kind of critical like this. I will reserve the LinkedIn messaging to get a hold of my network when I need it. I can get a hold of them on the phone. I can get a hold of them with email, text, whatever. But when I really need to, uh, you know, get something going, everybody pays attention to it. It's really remarkable. Interesting. And Monsi, you were talking about that yeah. too. Could you jump in? Yeah. Um, you know, definitely we know that LinkedIn is a great tool. Um, one thing I would caveat, though, that it totally depends on the industry that you are in, the sector, the uh, the field that you're working in. And again, I, you know, just relaying back on my experience, the crypto industry heavily relies on Twitter as a social media, as a networking mm -hmm. tool. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, being able to identify what's that key tool where everyone in your uh, field or industry is hanging out, where are these like interesting conversations happening is important. And then those are your tools, your go-to tools. Um, and then, you know, Christine, to your point about depending on what kind of networking you're looking for, the strategy evolves. So if you are looking, you know, for business partners and clients, um, a lot of trade shows and conferences are the right way to go because you can do one to many networking because everyone's kind of congregating in one spot. Um, but, you know, the, the second objective that I was talking about where you want to listen to someone, you know, what challenges they are facing, how are they solving. I've uh, found one-on-one -on -one conversations much more helpful in those cases. Just reaching out to those people, setting a 30-minute coffee chat in the virtual world, like online chat, whatever that looks like. Um, and just digging into that conversation, going deep, because a lot of the time, you know, in one-to-many um, networking sessions, it's hard to get to the crux of the matter. And it's really a lot more superficial as opposed to in one-on-ones where you can actually, um, you know, get to the meat of the matter. So I prefer, depending on what's the objective, I prefer either one-on-ones uh, over um, multi-networking sessions. Great. Um, so talking about this, I think, one thing I kind of wanted to just sort of address, we're talking about pandemic rules. 
um, a lot of us maybe haven't done tons of networking, um, or maybe we have. I mean, we were, we were talking about this. Have you done a lot of networking in the past 18 months? I have not. Um, and it, it's not intentional. Um, it, it's, I, unfortunately, as much as we we're saying networking can't be transactional, um, being in the tech recruiting space, sometimes the catalyst of a great, of a great uh, connection starts very transactional. Um, and so for me, you know, these transactions happen over LinkedIn, they happen through application reviews. And for a period of time, you know, the tech industry, um, especially the recruiting piece of it had slowed dramatically. So where I was connecting with, you know, 15 or 20 people over a week and going, you know, I think three or four of these were really amazing. And I want to shoot them a note, letting them know, you know, even if, you know, I can't move forward on this opportunity, I just love to stay connected. I thought you were a fabulous resource just to, to someone to know. Um, and, and that had slowed dramatically for me. Um, and so I, and I would say in the last three to four months, I'm, I'm getting back into that. Um, I'm, as Barry said, I thought that was a phenomenal phrase, build it into your rhythm. Like it's, it's getting built back in, you know, these, these making these connections. Um, but I would say for the bulk of the pandemic, I had networking had really slowed for me. How about you, Jen? Um, I actually felt like I could do more one-on-ones and also, you know, my favorite kind of relationship tending is to keep in touch with people I already know. <laughs> so it was a really good opportunity to just send check-in emails on a regular basis and see how people were doing. Um, and, you know, to do it outside sort of, you know, a, a business need or a career need and just to kind of use the time to like really see how people in my, you know, in my world were actually holding up. So I was able to do some of that. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm on the same page with Jen. Um, you know, even though it was hard, kind of for networking, I would say I wasn't creating new connections, but at least tending to the connections that I already had, checking in with people that I had already created bonds uh, pre-pandemic, having conversations, just you know, touching base with folks. I think that's a good way to continue and strengthen the relationship. Yeah, and and that does bring up the issue of how you network. Because months you were talking about meetups, which used to happen in person, I think they're starting to to happen again. Like, given that all of you are you know full time busy during the day, like, do you do in person coffees a lot? Is it more meetups like one to many? What, physically, like in terms of like how you actually network, are you doing more online? Are you doing more in person? Would love to hear how you handle that part of it. Um, I, I, I think it's, for me anyway, it's still more online. I think people, companies are not traveling like they did. And, you know, people will meet you at a coffee shop at, outdoors. <laughs> you know, people are still, mm -hmm. uh, I think, not rushing to fill conference rooms or go inside. And um, so I, I think there's still uh, a remoteness to it. Um, at least what, that's what I've seen. I'll just personally say that I got very comfortable in like my sweatpants. So I, I, I'm i really, really happy to transition kind of to, to leveraging technology and using things like LinkedIn or Zoom uh, to be in touch. So that's, you know, that's con continued to be a, a way for me to, to engage and, you know, tend to relationships and create new ones. It's just so easy. I can fit more in in a day. I don't have to commute. I can wear pajama bottoms. Like I feel like everyone wins. So if we thought about that, right, and, and a lot of us have slowed down our networking, and I think, Monsi, I probably did what you did, right, which is I connected with people I already knew, but I didn't go out and meet more people. But what if someone, let's say, start from scratch, like maybe they are kind of newer to the job space, maybe they just graduated, um, they've only kind of like started looking during the pandemic, like how does somebody actually kickstart hmm networking like yeah. i'm going to do it this year this is like what what should they be thinking about how do they do that daily thoughts yeah, no. like you to say something so no i I'm, I'm, essentially what i would do is i would do I, I think i would do one of two things um and so the first thing i would look into um and i think would i'm, I'm I did this, this is exactly what I did. Um, I got into some classes. I was taking, you know, a couple of free webinars. I was I was fortunate that um, my previous company, um, they allowed me to, to uh, take a certificate program. 
And I was networking like crazy. It's like I was in a position where, you know, I'm in a virtual chat with somewhere between like 10 and 50 people who have similar goals than me. And just going, hey, I loved what you put on that blog mm -hmm. post. I would love to connect with you sometime about that. Um, mm -hmm. And so the one, I think um, continuing education, even if, even if you can't, you know, pay for the certificate, like even if that's just not something that your company will let you do, the free webinars, like get out there. There's, there's opportunities to continue that, those, um, to continue education. Um, and the second thing I would do, and, and if you all will indulge me a quick story, um, I was new to the Boston area. I'm actually originally from Seattle and I moved to Boston about four years ago. And I'm, I'm relatively new in my time in Boston, maybe, you know, eight or nine months in my time living in Boston. And I mm -hmm. happened to go to a, you know, tech recruiting um, little panel to do at General Assembly. And um, there was a speaker up there and I, I thought she was she was quite insightful. And I reached out to her after I said, hey, I saw you at General at the panel at GA. I would just love to stay connected. Um, about six months ago, you know, and, and we did, we did stay connected. I think that's important. Um, and about six months ago, she reached out to me and she said, hey, my team is looking to hire. And I was transitioning out of my current role. I was like, you know, I've been here three and a half years. I think it's maybe time for a move. And because I had made this connection, just like at a panel, I thought you were very insightful. I'd love to stay connected. Four years later, um, we now are partners um, where I'm currently working. It's great. Yeah, I think that goes back to the point that we all made about networking being, you know, not really transactional because you never know who's yeah. going to help when you need it or who's going to, you know, be a great network or connection. It's most chances are, you know, it's people that you wouldn't have imagined um, helping you, um, you know, that that eventually end up working out. So. You, keeping it you know more about making connections really building those human networks is, is important um, and then Christine to your question um, about you know someone who's new hasn't done this ever how do you go about it and maybe I'm repeating myself but first thing first is identifying where does your community or your industry hang out identifying those tools and platforms mm -hmm. and then just like flooding it, like go to 10 different events, go to 10 different online sessions, just like go to as many as you can, because mm -hmm. you won't know till you attend them that you, that, you know, that's your tribe. Um, and it's it's really trial and error. And that that was the case for me as I was transitioning. I, I used to work in the traditional finance space and I was transitioning into the crypto blockchain space, very different industries. Um, I didn't know a lot about the space, but I was just going to as many events as I could meeting people, having similar conversations to, you know, to a point now where I know which ones to prioritize, which ones are meaningful for me. And, yeah. you know, as you get busy, um, you only have 24 hours in a day. There's there's only so much you can do in terms of networking. It's really critical to mm -hmm. identify which events, which conferences, which conversations are going to add value to both people involved in that conversation. Um, and prioritizing those. So one thing that I've recently started doing is allocating X number of hours a week for networking. And uh, you know, it can be five, it can be 10, it can be two, it can be one, whatever, whatever is your convenience. Um, just allocate that time to connect with people, to meet new people, or you know, also just continue conversations with people you've met before. And Mansi, you, you said something, and so I should say Mansi and I actually know each other from several of those blockchain meetups, so um, <laughs> they work. We can say that for sure. Uh, and, and you were talking about how you used networking to transition into a different line of work, like into a different career, and that's actually one of our questions. So Jen, I was hoping you could take this one also following on what Mansi said. So the question was, um, what advice do you suggest for those who are wishing to change career paths into a space that's totally different from the current career. Yeah, so I think my advice here is to get curious. Um, and I, you know, sometimes people mm -hmm. feel like when they are networking, they're asking for a job, but I actually think that something you can ask for is information. It's a lower mm -hmm. lift, right? So um, a lot of times we encourage our clients who want to transition industries or are just curious about exploring that to try and initiate conversations with people already in the industry, people who've maybe successfully transitioned from, from some other way. And that way you don't have to ask for a 
day job, you're really gathering some information and trying to understand how to position yourself as a potential candidate for these kinds of opportunities. And, you know, I'm listening to Bailey's story, it was such a good anecdote because it reminded me like, you know, Bailey could have sent that, you know, person from the GA panel, like, hey, do you have any openings, right? That would have been one kind of message mm -hmm. to send there. And it wouldn't have been inappropriate. And it's a fair question to ask, hey, are you hiring? But I love the the compliment. Like Bailey was just like, I really like what you had to say. Um, and so that really allowed them to like bond over some like common values or common interests and really start to initiate a deeper relationship and know each other in a different way. Right. And that's, you know, that's probably what laid the foundation for that relationship to eventually turn into a job offer. So, you know, treat, treating people with kindness and curiosity can go a really long way. And um, just because mm -hmm. we're planting seeds, we don't harvest on the same day, right? So I think that that's a helpful uh, way to think about this. Plant seeds yeah. and harvest down the line. <laughs> I, I think that's really, really good advice. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I, I would say, don't be afraid to just cold call people. And, meaning like, I get I get email I get notes on LinkedIn pretty much every day from people and I look at every single one of them I probably accept 30 percent of them into my network and then I when I do that I reach out to them I said would you like to would you like to chat you know and so you know so don't don't be afraid to reach out to people uh, either Twitter or however you however your your industry is working people will engage and are glad to do it and Matsy, I, I wanted to follow up on that. Like, so did you already know you wanted to be in the crypto space when you started networking or did, were you just, did you use networking to explore also? Yeah, it, initially it was just, you know, curiosity, something that I was interested to learn more about. I was like, yeah, crypto can be a side hobby. And as I explored further, spoke to people who were passionate about the field, who were working in the field, it just like converted me. Um, so it, you know, it started as exploration, but then led me into just moving completely into the field. And now I am one of those people who will convince others to join. <laughs> Uh, but I, you know, just taking the analogy a little further, like I love the planting seeds and harvesting them later, but need, you know, all the seeds that you've planted need not be harvested and they won't. Some relations will yield, some won't, mm -hmm. and you don't know which ones will yield. Yeah, so it's right important now. to just kind of spread them wide um, and go from there. So Barry, there's a question here. And I think given how many people, like what you were saying about people reach out to you and the question is, can you talk about some techniques to make conversation? Like what did that 30% say to you that you're like, yeah, I'll, I'll connect with you. I'll reach out to you. Just out um, of curiosity. Well, I, I think it's like what Bailey's saying. I think they, they have seen, you know, somehow they know of me or whatever they search and they find me, but, and I, and I, and if they're, if, if they're coming from a place like you can kind of read their heart, you know, and if their heart is in the right place, and that's normally when I'll engage with them. If I feel like they're trying to sell me something, well, sometimes I'll connect with them if they're trying to sell me, but normally it's, and there's nothing wrong with selling by the way, but it, it's more like, hey, I'm thinking about getting into this career. I see you've done it. This, you've been in this industry for a while. Do you mind spending some time with me? And I always pick those up. So it's more, it's more about that. It's more about is their heart in the right place? And. Um, you know, so I think you're hearing a common theme here about don't make it transactional uh, if you can avoid it. But so many times I get a legitimate transactional request and I will jump on that, too, depending on the nature of the transaction. But it's it's more about looking into their heart. Okay. And, and Jen, when you were talking about like networking for information, what kinds of questions would somebody start? Like if you wanted to reach out to Bailey and say, not do you have a job like what's an opener what does somebody ask for yeah so i think this can really depend and we work a lot with our clients to help them find a role that's a good fit for them and so you know understanding the team and organizational culture and dynamics can be a really important thing to ask about asking about um you know 
your own skill set and how they might view your skill set and experience coming in from a different industry or potentially a different function. Um, people also love to talk about themselves. So I, I always say, like, ask them about their own career. It's a good icebreaker. You know, if you can ask for any lessons or insights that they might have for you as you're on your journey. And people love to share that. And it keeps things high level and, again, like gives you ways to kind of maintain a relationship rather than just, you know, asking for a job right off the bat. Yeah, and just adding two more tactical points there. One, just read up about that person, what they do, you know, if they've written any blogs, if they've published anything, just do a little bit more research before having that conversation, and that makes mm -hmm. the conversation a lot more involved. Um, and then second um, is more of a don't. Don't, um, you know, you respect the time that they're giving you. you know, most of these people are extremely busy. They're taking time out of their you know, busy lives uh, to talk to you for 30 minutes. Just respect. Don't be late. Don't, you know, go over time. Just basic um, things that you can do to make that relationship last longer. Yeah, I, uh, to, to piggyback off, off of what you're saying, Monsi, um, I, I've learned in my career, um, know what you don't know, like know what you do and don't know. Um, I have, when I was young and, and naive, I would set up these informational meetings in the company and I would say, I would love to learn about what you do. Then I'm just sitting there waiting for them to just give me all this information. Um, and I and I learned that, you know, doing a, a tiny bit of research and going, you know, maybe you're talking to someone in the talent acquisition space, um, you know, I'm, I'm new in this space. I'm, I'm really getting into sourcing. And I was wondering over your career, what tools you found most effective is a great way to sort of um, point to what you don't know and frame it up in a way that says, I'm doing my research. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, meet this conversation halfway so I can, I can have some um, insights and ask some informed questions is, is I think something that people, um, when you're new to networking is easily overlooked. Just to comment on that, that sometimes, sometimes something I try to imprint on my clients is that your questions can make you look good. Like your questions can position you. And that's a great question. Like understanding what, like show, being able to reflect on what you know are your own gaps, but also being able to show effort moving to build them can be very compelling. So um, I love that framing. And so we have another question that actually I think, um, Monsi, you talked about like carving out time to dedicate to this. And the question is, how do you do that if your role is just a difficult role to carve out time for? Like, you know, it's, it's just difficult to physically find time. Like, how do you prioritize or how do you think about networking in, say, an hour a week instead of, you know, maybe four hours? Any, any thoughts on that? Yeah, that's, that's a difficult spot to be in. Um, I think networking is kind of part of my job, so I can take the hours of my work day to network. Um, but if you don't have the hours, it's it's really difficult. And at that point, you have to be super strategic and prioritize. If you're just going to have one conversation a week, who is that one person you really want to talk to who's going to add value to? You know, whatever your objective is, um, instead of, you know, the Spread, spread around the trial and error approach. I think you'll have to be super um, strategic and uh, intentional in who you speak with. Yeah, right. yeah I, I have a little different view of it, um, but, but my, my, net, my network is my business um, and somewhat of my personal life. So I'm always on, I'm always connected to my network every day, all the time. And um, I'm working on projects around the world with all kinds of people everywhere. And so it's just coming from, it's, all, <laughs> it's always there. Uh, so I don't have a distinction anymore. Uh, and maybe that's just because of the kind of work I do. But, um, but I, I, do think, um, I do think if you're an, an entrepreneur and you're building a company, you're going to have networks of suppliers, of customers, of potential employees, of contractors i mean you you've just got you're going to have the same thing your network kind of becomes your business in a way uh and so uh, i wouldn't be surprised if you're spending a huge amount of time there i'll offer a couple of thoughts here too i i, I have to agree as a self-employed person like 
this is a non-negotiable for us. <laughs> so we spend a lot of time tending to our relationships because that that is our business, I would agree. Um, but I think, you know, I work with a lot of very busy professionals who are also job seekers. So some things that we do, I always actually say like an hour a week is actually a lot of time. Um, if I could get an hour, if all my clients did this for an hour a week, they probably wouldn't need me. So, um, so I would say coming up with some email templates, we offer email templates to our clients um, for a variety of circumstances and different asks and just having them, you know, either as canned templates in your Gmail or in a Google Doc somewhere that you can easily access them. Um, and some of those emails include things like just saying hello and checking in and hope and hope you're well to people who are like your references, mentors, you know, people from past jobs. And so if you can get into kind of a seasonal rhythm around checking in on people, that's a real low lift that takes truly like moments um, and, and can pay off in big ways down the line. Um, and also if you can kind of commit to like a professional development opportunity, like if you can weave in something, you know, attend a, a panel or workshop or webinar, going to things that um, enhance your current role or make sense for your current role, you'll still meet people there. Um, and so using those kind of organic opportunities to still carry out and create new relationships can be really helpful. Right. And I, I think what you're hearing all of us talk about um, here is that, you know, I think that all of us either ourselves or know people who got laid off, their startup failed, and they thought they didn't have time to network. And then they really had to scramble, right? So in a lot of ways, if part of it is attitude, right? Part of it is you can't think of networking as something to do separate from your job, right? Like what you were saying, Jen and Barry, you were saying, right, that, that networking really should be considered part of your career development because you don't know when you're going to need your network, right? It's just kind of the way that that, that works. Um, this one's a little bit, question is a little bit more tactical, but I think relates to some of the things we've been talking about was uh, I just, the question is, I just went to business school and took a course on big data, BI, analytics, hot spaces here in Boston, um, and have been looking for ways to use the knowledge that I've learned. What's a great space for a person who's a beginner, right? So maybe not somebody who is already in a space, but um, it wants to enter a space, maybe not at the career level, but at the, do at the domain mm -hmm. level. What do you guys think about that? Uh, let me, maybe I'll take that one. I, I have a, I have a degree in, in bioinformatics, um, because I was interested in biology and it was a mid career degree. Um, uh, I've never worked in the field, but I love it. So when I, 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 so what I would say is if you're in that particular field that you're talking about data analytics and all of that, pick an area that you love that gets you excited that you would do as a hobby anywhere and you will shine. It's super fascinating field. Um, but if you're doing something like I could never do it in the finance field, I mean, I would just fall asleep. So, uh, so just try to find a field, whatever floats your boat and go there. And, and people will see that you, that will resonate and, and you'll become an expert just because you love it and you'd want to do it as a hobby anyway. Now that, that's maybe what I would suggest there. Okay. Great. So, Let's take um, a little bit more of a mercenary turn here. Um, all of you have been very successful in what you're doing. Um, and so if you're prioritizing as somebody who has more ability to pick and choose where you network um, and maybe others don't, like how do you prioritize places where you think you will find the right people for you? right? Like the maybe hiring managers, maybe people who are more senior than you, right? So um, Monsi and I both have gone through this, like in the early days of blockchain, it was just like a bunch of people who like, nobody knew anything, but we just all wanted to know each other, right? So like, it, that was sort of like a different kind of a vibe. But like, so, for, so if you're networking, you're trying to like get a job in a startup, or you're, you know, you're trying to think about that, like, what are things that some people should think about in terms of like finding places with the right kind of people that you'd like to meet? You know, I think you have to be willing to like, make mistakes <laughs> as part of the, the exploration process here, right? Like if I went to my first networking event, you know, which was like in a dark bar with like 500 people, half of whom were selling insurance, like, uh, you know, like I would have been like, wow, this networking is a waste of time. But, you know, I got 
closer and closer and kind of like, okay, let's try smaller opportunities where you can really connect with people. Let me try organizations that align with like my interest or in my case, like what my clients would be interested in. So I think it's really important to like pay attention, like give yourself like room here to like go to events or meet people and be like, this isn't something I want to invest in long term. That's fine. And that's normal. Um, I can tell you that like the organizations and opportunities that rose to the top seven years ago when I started my business are still extremely important, you know, people, relationships and organizations for me personally and professionally today. So whatever, however many, you know, dark bar networking events I might have gone to in the past, um, I now have like a really great group of like very long standing relationships. So it was very worthwhile, but there were definitely moments where it didn't feel worthwhile. So not everything is going to be, you know, a, a hit out of the park. All right. But just try it. You got to start somewhere. Got to start somewhere. Right. I, I would I would echo that in saying um, prioritizing spaces you don't know over spaces that you do know. Um, because spaces that you do know, I mean, they're lovely and they're comfortable. Um, but but part of networking is getting out into those spaces that you don't know and, and um, looking for that information and looking to make those connections. And as Jen said, not everyone is going to be great. You are going to go to some conferences where it's all it's going to be everyone selling, you know, Aflac or, or what have you like that's going to happen. So. If, if we thought about that and you want to network, your heart's in the right place, how do you build trust? One of the questions is like, if it's hard to meet in person and you're effectively cold calling, how, how do you communicate effectively in a way that shows somebody that you're genuine? I really am just calling to say hi and gather information and I'm not going to sell you insurance once I get you on the phone. Any, any thoughts on what people can do to build trust? I think I think if they do it almost word it exactly like you say say I think that's that's the way to word it like look first look in your heart before you reach out it's okay to sell your into your network too by the way I was saying about yeah. I, I don't always answer answer sales but I do answer some sales if somebody says hey I got a great new product it may help you do you mind chatting about it I'm I'm gonna take a look so it's it's about legitimacy and and sometimes the messages you get on your network they're obviously generated by a robot <clears throat> and maybe a human robot or maybe a <laughs> robot robot uh but you, you kind of sniff those out and you say i'm not gonna waste my time on robots and it it comes through it's just loud and clear so if you really want to reach somebody and you know you you say i i really need to talk to you i'm thinking about changing careers i i really need to know this is important for me i will always pick that up it honestly i i think it's yeah i think you can just be yourself approach people how you would want to be approached and be uh, genuine and, and and i do think people will respond quite 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 readily you know yeah, I think just quickly adding one thing, um, add context to that initial outreach, right? Yeah. Like a lot of emails or messages I get, hey, I found your profile, it's interesting, let's talk. I'm yeah. most likely not going to respond to that. Uh, as opposed to someone's like, this XYZ thing that you wrote, or this is what you're working on is interesting for this reason, and I'm working on something similar, I want to chat. Like, just add more context, um, and that makes it easier for the person who's reading that message to um, you know, evaluate whether that conversation is going to be meaningful or not. Um, and then it's, it's fine. Some people are not going to respond to you. That's OK. Majority of the people will respond, and that's fine um, to just give it a try. And also, it sounds like, and I know I'm like this when, when people are networking, Like, it's OK to say that you want something, right? Like. I'm working on this or, you know, I'm looking for a job and I just kind of want to understand a little bit about what you're working on. Cause I think people are always sort of looking for like, why, why are you calling me? Right? Like, yes, obviously you want something just kind of like be upfront about it. Um, but also how should, how should people who want to network think about what they're offering? Right? Cause right now it, it sounds a lot like we want things, right? We're networking cause we want things, but, how do you network in a way that demonstrates that you have things that you want to share, right? You want to network because you want to contribute somewhere. What are the kinds of things that someone could say or places they could network that could do that, right? Like 
I, I know about AI and I really want to help build something and, you know, or like I'm really interested in, in uh, crypto and I really want to help build up a, you know, a, a project that somebody's working on. Like, like how, how do you do that? Like without making it look like you're selling, but like, Hey, I want to, I want to contribute to, I'm just not looking for things. I ask how I can help. <laughs> I ever, so every time I meet a new person and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, especially if it's something I initiated or not, I just say like, how can I help you? Because sometimes people actually don't want to make me ask, right? Like they don't want to be too urgent or forward. So I always ask, like, is there someone you're hoping to meet? Is there something you hope I can do? Mm -hmm. um, and kind of just cut right to the chase. I can say that like when I connect with like, recruiters or folks in hiring, like I will share their posts to my feed. Um, I will message them to people that I think might be interested. I will comment for reach. And so there's like tiny ways that you can kind of, you know, maintain connection and offer support to people um, trying to, you know, fill hard to fill roles and things like that. Um, so those are some small things that I do pretty regularly, but I also just ask. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I think you I think you ask and I think when people do come to you, say they're, you know, you haven't talked to them in three years, you jump on it, you do it. You, if you can do it, you do it and you do it well and you do it quickly and you attend to them. You don't put them on the back burner, you know, you, you, you know, you, and then after a while that you gain stock, I think, from doing that because people know that oh, if they do ever need you and then they tell their friends and then, you know, your network just appreciates you. and. I, but yeah, you, you, you do need to reciprocate for sure. Yeah. And related, so we know some people, like for example, VCs are very clear about like they want to be introduced to you by someone else, right? A lot of times, like they're looking for that. How much of that goes into your networking? Either you going outbound, you know, asking for a referral to somebody else, Barry, you kind of talked about that a little bit, or, you know, how important is it to you that somebody reached out directly versus getting an introduction from from somebody else. I, I think a, a, an introduction is um, probably gets them more to the top of the queue quicker. If it's somebody that I know that's introducing them. Okay. And how often? Yeah, I think that. Go ahead, Monty, and then I'm going to follow up. Um, yeah, I think that it was over a period of time. If you're really new to an industry. Um, and you're just starting to make build connections. Um, a lot of it is going to be cold, right? Because you already you don't know someone, um, or you don't know anyone in that space. But over a period of time, as you start building those initial connections, they can help you. And it kind of snowballs. It's just you get you got to start somewhere. And then you know, I go to events, and then I meet someone, and they're like, "Oh, you should talk to this X Y Z person," and they introduce me. Or they, you know, sometimes people talk about other events that they are interested in. So you start getting, you know, connections and introductions or even ideas about what to do next once you start. So that's the first step is always the hardest. Right. Bailey, do you have advice? Like, so if somebody comes to you and says, hey, would you introduce me to so-and-so? Like we hear a lot about like, you know, having like what Jen said earlier, a template of, you know, cause usually the person will be like, that's a pretty big ask unless you tell me exactly what you want from the other person. Like what can the person asking for the introduction do to make it easier for you to make that introduction for them? Um, I'm, I'm gonna revisit a, a previous answer um, and it's know what you don't know. Um, when you are asking for a favor, I'm, I, I'm happy to facilitate the favor, but I think um, understanding, hey, I am trying to break into this industry or um, I would love to know them because um, they post really insightful blogs and I think they would be a fabulous resource in my, in, you know, in my network. Um, or, you know, I just think they're super cool. I would just love to know them, um, you know, and, and being able to articulate what you want, why you want it um, and, and really, I guess, making it genuine, like fostering that trust with me, um, because I, I think that networks are reciprocal. And so what you don't want to do is you do not want to abuse your network 
by um, shoveling every person who says, hey, can I have an intro? You know, pushing every intro forward, like because networks are reciprocal and you wouldn't want people who you've built relationships with um, to be throwing every resume on your desk or every LinkedIn profile on your desk. You know, you're like, no, this is this is a part of how I um, sort of move my professional career forward. This is a part of how I build sort of like, you know, thought leadership. You know, this, there's a lot of things that I garner from my network that are not just coffee dates. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and so I, I think a lot of it is coming with genuine interest and in being able to articulate it. Right. Yeah. And again, a tactical point, there's something called as forwardable emails. So, you know, if you can do that, that's ideal for someone who's making the connection. Just write an email to them with you know, your background, why you are interested in this connection. And the only thing the person who's connecting has to do is forward that to the mm -hmm. person that they're connecting to. So it's you know really low um, effort for this person, and you will have higher chances of making that connection. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so we've got about nine minutes left, um, and this actually I should also say is really useful for all the Startup Boston organizers because this is what we do all year. We are literally looking researching all the time like wow, did, did you hear that person speak like how can we meet that person let's get this person to start up boston and so uh you know it's always great for us too because networking i think we've we've all learned here is like it's just part of your job right it, it shouldn't be thought of um as separate so um before i let you all go maybe you could give the audience like one like tip or anecdote that really helped you that they could also, you know, maybe adopt, like, you know, what's something they could do today after they got off the phone that, that they could say like, yeah, here's like a practical step. Here's something I could do right away to kind of feel like I'm making momentum here. Not sure if I'm answering a question, but one thing if people are listening to this panel can do is reach out to all of us on this panel after the conversation ended and say, hey, this is a good conversation. Let's connect. I mean, that's super simple. You have the context. You've you know heard some of the things that we've said, and it's easier to make those connections. Okay. Yeah, I was going to actually make a similar suggestion, which is pick like between one and three people in already in your network, you know, former coworkers, mentors, and just send a hello, thinking of you, hope you're well kind of email, no ask. Um, you could certainly do that for folks you don't know and just send a complimentary email. But I love for folks who are afraid to make an ask, sending an email that's just, you know, a check in or a thank you for being an inspiration or, or sharing your insights can go a long way too. I would I would echo um, what Jen and Monsi have said, um, but I would also add sort of as a as a tip for people who are younger in their career. Um, we live in such a digital age where I have a barrage of like text, emails, LinkedIn messages. Like my entire life is just a wall of text. It feels like some days, um, and 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 re and get out there. Like go to those outdoor coffee dates. You know, get out, get on a phone call. Like don't text. Like get out you know when you are young in your career making that extra effort is what's going to set you among the tens of thousands of people that are also you know two to three years in their career and they're looking to make a splash and make an impact excellent okay so we have one last question that i think we might all be able mm -hmm. to answer quickly um, which was um are there any unique wild or out of the box ideas that have worked well, either that you did or that somebody else did that wouldn't be considered sort of traditional networking, but you're like, okay, yeah, mm -hmm. that that's stuck in my mind as a, mm -hmm. as a unique thing. Any, uh, any thoughts uh, that you guys I'll, have there? I'll mention one. There, there was a, a few years, well, probably 15 years ago now, there was a series of um, present uh, discussions that MIT sponsored with Nobel laureates who would get up and you know, address an audience. There was maybe anywhere from 10 to 100 people or 200 people in the audience, depending on the topic. And I would go there, I'd drag my kids along, you know, and, and, and they were just so insightful. And I met a lot of really interesting people through that. So, you know, I think the point is that we're all human and, and it doesn't matter if you're a Nobel laureate or a president or a senator or whatever. 
make connections with all kinds of people and not just people that are at the top, but also people who are struggling, who are learning, who are growing and they're young and, mm -hmm. and maybe you have face adversity, you know, so look through across the spectrum and build your network very broadly. I think it's, it's really important to do that. Yeah, and I think, you know, I agree with Barry. Um, sometimes you might help someone and you don't know what, you know, how their career progresses and you might need help from them. Um, so definitely, you know, talk to people across the spectrum. Um, and then I don't know if this is unique, but um, networking works both ways, right? Where one is outreach, but the second component, as you kind of build your network, is inward uh, connections. And that happens by creating a social profile. Like, you need to start being out there, pushing content, pushing, you know, whatever that platform may be. Um, you also need to create your social profile so that people want to connect with you as well. Because, you know, one way it doesn't always work. You want to reach a spot where you are getting inbound messages for people who are wanting to connect with you. Great. Pulling people toward you, too. Definitely a great idea. This has been a fantastic panel. We've gotten some great questions and you've really helped a lot. Um, hopefully the people listening have been quoting and will be part of the, the contest later on, but we really appreciate all of you helping us with our education and our community in Startup Boston. And thank you so much to our panelists. Thanks to the attendees and ho hopefully you'll get a chance to enjoy some of the other sessions today and tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks everybody. Thanks. Thank you, Christine. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Bye.